Let's begin by texturing the structure. First, we'll texture the floor. Open the material editor and in the search tab, write multi texture, drag and drop it into the material editor scene. Then double click multi texture and in manage texture, we will add all the textures that we want for the planks. The next step is to drag and drop the corona material to the material editor scene and change the name to the floor. Set a reflection of 1 and glossiness of 0 0.75. We can change the color and saturation by color correction. We can do that by writing color correction in the search tab and dragging and dropping it in the middle of the connection string between corona material and multi texture. Double click to go to the adjustments, move the saturation button to the left to decrease saturation. And on the advanced, change the gamma to 1.5 to make it brighter. To add black and white texture to the planks, we'll add another color correction and connect multi texture to it. We'll also connect it to the bump and move the saturation all the way to the left to make it black and white. Apply texture to the floor. After doing the lighting, we may need to make some adjustment to the material. The next step is to work on the baseboard. For that, we will have a light gray that is close to white. We should never use 100% white because it's going to be overexposed, resulting in a loss of details in the texture. For the glossiness, we'll use 0.25 and apply it to the baseboard. For the wall, we'll make the same adjustment with a different color. We'll have another surface on the floor as a base to prevent exterior light from entering through the gaps between planks. For that, we'll use a dark gray color. Next, we'll be texturing with tile for the bathrooms. We'll do this using multi texture again. For the texture, we'll be applying the same texture while varying the direction. For the corona material, we'll set a reflection of 1 and glossiness of 0.85. Let's add color correction to make it darker in the advanced option and make it 0.8. Now it's time to merge furniture to the living and dining areas. Go to the file, import merge to the address that we want to merge and select all. Hit OK and move it close to the scene. Start placing furniture by using furniture layout in the floor plan. For each one, select Furniture and Floor Isolated to make sure that we are placing furniture exactly on the ground and ensure that it's not floating. Between the dining and living areas, we have a glossy shader wall that will separate the two areas. To achieve this, we'll use a box with the same size that we have in the floor plan and height of the ceiling. For the texture, let's grab a corona material with the views of very dark gray, set reflection to 1, and glossiness to 0 0.9. Change the fernel to 2 and then apply it to the wall. The media cabinet and TV will be attached to this wall. We have a shelf behind the sofa and we need a side table and coffee table which we'll model now. Let's start by modeling the shelf. Create a box with a length of 1 cm and width of 40 cm and height of 9 feet. Instance 6 of them and rotate to create some variation. Use another box to make the top part of the shelf and copy and change the thickness for the other rows of the shelf. For the texture, grab a corona material with a diffuse of dark beige color and glossiness of 0.85. For the sides, we'll create a gold color. To do that, grab another corona material and make the diffuse color black. Reflection color should be dark gold with Fernel IOR 999. And reflection set to 1 and glossiness of 0 0.85. Apply a texture to glossiness to have some dirt and detail on the gold material. Scroll down in the advanced options and change reflection glossiness to 0.25. To make sure that the UVW map is correct, let's use the same dirt texture for the views and change the IUR to 1.6 to see the texture on the object. Fix the UVW, then change it back to the previous adjustment. Now 
Next up, let's make a side table. Create a box with a size of 50 by 50 by 50 centimeter and make a copy of that to use the first one as a measurement source. Convert it to an editable poly. Adjust vertices for the first part. Select this polygon and insert it to a smaller size and move it down a bit. Select bevel and make a wider box and another bevel with a smaller one. Continue to make four of them, then go to the left view, adjust polygons, and at the end, go to the modifier panel and select all the edges and apply chamfer to soften the edges. Now it's time to apply texture. First, we move it to the scene between two armchairs and then open the material editor and grab a chrono material. For texture, uh, we'll use wood uh, with a glossiness of 0 0.35. Add color correction to make some adjustments. Let's move the saturation bottom all the way left to have a little bit of saturation. And in advance, set RGB to 60 and gamma to 0 0.7 and assign black and white texture to the bump. We may need to apply a UVW map from the modifier panel. Next, we'll model the coffee table. Start by creating a box with dimension of 120 cm by 90 cm by 30 cm. Make a copy and start modeling the top part of that. Convert it to an editable poly. Select all the edges at the corner and chamfer it. And then select all the edges at the bottom and round the bottom part with chamfer. Then we select this polygon and insert it and extrude it in. To create the base, we'll create another box and apply chamfer to make the edges round. For the texture, open Material Editor and drag and drop Chrono Material with the beige color and glossiness of 0 0.25 and another Chrono Material with a darker version of previous one. Let's add some dirt to the texture. In the search type Chrono Layered Material and drag and drop it to the Material Editor. We'll apply beige color to the base material and the darker one to the layer one. To blend the two colors, we'll assign the material to the mask on top of the base material. Apply the UVW map to the table. We now uh, have two coffee tables with different heights. So we'll copy this one and change the height. For the texture, we'll use a color between gray and brown with a glossiness of 0 0.65 and in advanced option, reflection, we'll change it to 65. The engine that we're using for render in this course is Corona Render 5, but let's introduce Arnold Renderer which is included with the default install of 3ds Max and has interactive rendering. You can choose it from Render Setup dialog. We'll do some test rendering for the coffee table that we model. First, open another 3ds Max file and make a background surface and merge coffee table to the scene. Then go to the Render Setup, set Production Render to Arnold, and in the comment tab, set the aspect ratio to 800 by 450. In the active shade mode, set the renderer to Arnold and set up the same aspect ratio for that. Now we want to make light. In the create panel, go to the light, Arnold light and drag and drop it to the scene. In the shape, you have different type of the lights. By default, it's set to quad, which is the basic rectangle light. We add two lights on the both sides of the coffee table with two different temperatures, warm and cold. Now we run active shade and as you can see by moving on the scene, we have real-time render. To make environment bright, go to the rendering, environment and effects and change the color to the off-white. Let's add material to the coffee table by opening Material Editor, right-click, Arnold, Surface, Standard Surface. 
This material is capable to make all different materials by option that it has. To make same texture that we made in Corona Render, first write in the search tab Mix RGBA and assign it to the base. Then with eyedropper, get the material from coffee table to use the third texture for this standard surface. Assign this texture to the input 1 and for input 2, change the color to the beige and mix to 0.7. Then go to the standard surface and change the base color to 0.5 and a specular to 0.5 and roughness to 0.7 and assign it to the coffee table and make another standard surface material with gray color and assign it to the background surface do some real-time render to check the material it looks pretty good and we need to make it more beige color to do that we copy paste the color for the input 2 to the base color and uh, check the render again to do some setup for the render let's go to the render setup the most important part in the arnold render setup is arnold render tab sampling and ray depth setup and in this tab we control all the quality of the render we have two parts sample and ray depth in the sample we control all the noises, for example, if we increase the diffuse number, we will have less noise for the diffuse. In ray depth, we control how many times ray bounce in the scene. By increasing camera AA, we will increase in quality of the render. In the AOVs, we control render element that we don't want to use it for now. Our node is physically accurate and we don't need to do anything and the only thing that we need to control is the noise amount. Let's go back to the main scene and check the material for the carpet. Begin by selecting and isolating it. Open the material editor. With eyedropper, grab the texture. As you can see, we have a texture for the bump. And we want to have displacement for that to make it more realistic. To do that, go to the modifier panel and select Corona Displacement Mode. For maximum length of displacement, we we'll leave it to 0.5 cm. And for displacement map, we we'll use the same texture that we have for the bump. We are now done modeling the furniture for the living and dining area. Next, we'll need to add some accessories to the scene. In the next session, we will work on the remaining areas.